everyone, welcome to our World Cup special. We're coming to you live from Sydney and no matter how beautiful the Sydney skyline is, I'd have to say that today I wish I was in Auckland because all the action was in Auckland and boy what a semi-final we saw there. Uh, one of the most exciting games of the tournament. You had everything there, some great seam bowling by Bolt and uh, by Dale Stain, Mone Morkel, some good spin bowling by Imran Tahir and also Daniel Vittori, some great batting by McCullum and A.B. De Villiers. A six in the last over, a packed house at Eden Park. What else could one ask for? And in the end, we've got the most exciting game of the tournament so far. Here are the highlights. The South African captain played another crucial knock. A.B. de Villiers scored a 45-ball 65 and in the process overtook Jacques Callis to become South Africa's leading run-getter in World Cups with 1,207 runs now in 23 World Cup matches. Michael Vaughan tweeted to say, sit back wherever you are and just enjoy the greatness of A.B. de Villiers. This guy is a freak. Another South African batsman who stood tall was Faf Duplessis, who made 82 of 107 balls. A.B. and Duplessis in fact put on an unbeaten 102 run stand for the fourth wicket. This was South Africa's first century stand ever for any wicket in a World Cup semi-final. A rain delay saw the match being shortened to a 43 overs a side encounter. Damien Martin tweeted to say, the Black Caps will be happy for the rain. Game was slipping away. The world's best batsman, A.B. de Villiers, putting on a show. When the match resumed, David Miller played a sensational knock. He scored 49 of just 18 balls with 6 fours and 3 sixes. A.B. and Miller scored 65 runs in the last 5 overs. South Africa finished with 281 for 5. The revised target for New Zealand was 298 in 43 overs. Trent Bolt made a big impact. He took 2 for 53 in 9 overs. He is in fact now the leading wicket taker of the tournament with 21 wickets. He is also the leading wicket taker for New Zealand now in a single World Cup. Brendan McCullum came out all guns blazing. He scored 59 of just 26 balls. Baz has now scored 328 runs in 8 matches in this edition. This in fact is his best performance ever in a single edition of the World Cup. Matt Pryor tweeted to say, you just have to love how Brendan McCullum bats. That innings laid the foundation for the run chase. Corey Anderson and Grant Elliott put on a 103-run fifth wicket stand, with Elliott remaining unbeaten on 84 and Anderson making 58. New Zealand eventually won the match by four wickets according to the Duckworth-Lewis method. This in fact was the highest successful run chase ever in a World Cup knockout match. New Zealand are now through to their first ever World Cup final. Sachin Tendulkar tweeted to say, It's tough to see a side lose in a match like the semis. Well played South Africa. Big congratulations to New Zealand for making the ICC World Cup final and playing amazing cricket. Right, uh, how uh, we wish that Ian Chappell was on our show this evening. We've got Brian Lara, uh, Sunny Gavaskar will be joining us and VVS Lakshman. The reason I mentioned Ian's name is because a uh, day before the semi-final, he had said that any team that has Grant Elliott in its rank doesn't deserve to make it into the finals. Well, New Zealand have. Brian, I'll start with you. And we'll start with this one particular image and it'll be up on our screens very soon. It's the image of Grant Elliott who hit that winning six, lifting Dale Stain who had gone down on his knees, almost fell to the pitch. Did it just tell you that this was a game that no team deserved to lose? I mean, it was definitely a great game. And um, I mean, obviously, uh, New Zealand very happy to be in the finals but I think it is a, a great show of camaraderie on the field and um, compassion and uh, and a sort of a, a sad feeling for South Africa even by the man who actually put them out to the finals but that's true sportsmanship that's what the game is all about you don't see it in too many other sports but you do see it in cricket and uh, it was something very special to see at the end of the game and uh, I mean it's a lot of sorrowful faces on the field we saw a few guys crying also a very happy group and about 35 to 40,000 happy people at Eden Park. Okay, uh, let me go across to Sunny Gavaskar who joins us live from Mumbai. Uh, Sunny, Bhai, would it be fair to say, you know, this was New Zealand's seventh semi final, would it be fair to say that they deserve to be in the final this time around with the way they played in that semis? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, they deserve to play because they kept their cool, they kept their nerve, which South Africa didn't. And it wasn't just that uh, missed uh, catch uh, of Grant Elliott. The run-out opportunities that were there, they messed up with the run-out opportunities. So the cert certainly the nerves got the better of uh, the South Africans, and which has happened in the past as well. But I think what they can take away from this tournament is that at least they've made some progress. They made some progress. Uh, they, they were losing in the first round of the quarterfinals. 
and this time they've won the quarterfinals and uh, so you could say that they've made a little bit of progress but New Zealand thoroughly deserved to, to get into the finals because they've played outstanding cricket right throughout this tournament. All right. We, uh, Brian, we spoke about that one image of Elliot lifting stain. The other image that comes to my mind is of A.B. De Villiers, one of the finest batsmen that the game has. Monet Mokal, who bowled a fantastic smell. All of them crying. You know, grown men who fight so hard in the cricket field crying. Does this also give a glimpse to the fan of how tough this sport is? Ah, it's, it's a great tough. But it also shares um, the, the li brings to light the fact that it's not just about them. I mean, A.B. De Villiers said it. It's about his country. These guys come out here and it's nothing to do with their own personal gain. It's all about trying to, to uplift them for their country. And as you know, South Africa, many difficult um, situations in the past. They have been in so many uh, knockout matches in the World Cup, never got to the finals. So this would have been a perfect opportunity for them. So you, the feeling and, and the, the whole emotional side, I think it shows a different side to the sportsman. And uh, something that I think everybody is now being... Um, uh, everyone is embracing because it shows as I said you know yes we're playing a sport but it means a lot more than that okay let me go across to VVS now and let's talk about them uh, the man of the match it was Grant Elliott uh, VVS he's 36 years of age you retired when you were 37 looking at him do you think you retired a year too early I mean just talk us through that knock of Grant Elliott today uh, no firstly I, I'm happy the way when, the, uh, when I announced my retirement but having said that Nickel what a fantastic <laughs> knock uh, from Grant Elliott because when he came, uh, uh, New Zealand was in a spot of bother and you expect such kind of knocks from a Williamson or a Brendan McCallum or even uh, Guptill who are in tremendous form. But in this tournament, uh, Grant Elliott has not done uh, so well so for all of us to think that he will play such a, a match-winning knock, a turning uh, point uh, in today's game. But what really impressed me was his temperament, how cool he was. And he realized that he had to build a partnership with Anderson and, you know, go go till the end, you know, and take the game till the end and then anything could have happened. So I was really impressed with his temperament, the application, the way he paced his innings uh, and the confidence he showed even in such a precious situation. And it was fantastic to see. See, good players, you know, want to put up their hand in such situation and say, that, OK, this is an opportunity for me to do something for my country. This is an opportunity for me to actually be a match winner and be a star. And today, uh, Grant Hillier sees that opportunity with both uh, his hands. And, and it was fantastic to see uh, the way he, he played a responsible uh, innings and to win the game in such a crunch situation. Again, some of the best bowlers in world cricket was phenomenal. Okay, and not a lot of people would know that uh, uh, Elliot, who's uh, 36, didn't play any one-day cricket in 2014, but yet was called by the selectors uh, for this World Cup. What a great call that. Uh, but Sangha, I'll come to you. The other irony, I'm sure you didn't miss that too, is that uh, Grant Elliot was born in Johannesburg, played his first class cricket in South Africa. Now, plays for New Zealand and beats his uh, country of birth to, make the, to take New Zealand to their first ever finals. Well, at least there's one South African who doesn't choke. So that is, uh, that is something, uh, uh, you know, to think about. But maybe because, because it's a South African who's become a Kiwi. But whatever it is, uh, uh, the way he was uh, playing uh, from the 30th over onwards, just tapping the ball uh, uh, when Stain was bowling, it looked as if it's, he was the one who was making it difficult. And uh, at the end of the day, he realized that, you know, with, with the way he had patted some balls and not given Corey Anderson the strike when it was most important for Corey Anderson to get more of the uh, strike, uh, that he realized that it, it was left uh, to him now. It was on his shoulders to finish off the match, to win the match. And uh, what a blow. That was a terrific blow because that was the only time in the entire innings against Stain that he actually moved across towards the offside. Otherwise, his back foot was going outside leg stump. And, and the front foot was just going leg stump to middle stump. He, he just looked as if he was a little bit apprehensive, maybe scared of uh, Dale Stain. But when it mattered, his nerves uh, you know, were, were fantastic and he won the game. So credit to him for, for the way he batted. Okay, uh, Brian, to you, before this game, you said you, you had a sixth sense that 92, what didn't happen for South Africa in 92, will happen this time. But do you think it was the other way around, that curse of rain that happened in 92? Do you think rain played a major factor this time too? Yeah, most definitely. Um, we had a 50-over game and uh, the way how they structured their innings, the way the police batted with uh, uh, Russo, I think it was it showed that they laid the foundation for 
De Villiers to come. He came in, they were just getting into the uh, power play, about two or three overs into the power play and really looking to launch. And we have realized that sides are kind of doubling their score. What they have in 35 overs, they're doing it in the last 15. I would say that uh, South Africa was well on the way to above 350 runs. The psychological advantage they would have had getting that total, battering the New Zealand attack for a little bit longer, I think it definitely would have played a, a difference in what New Zealand had. New Zealand went into the game maybe saying that, listen, we have batted seven overs without losing a wicket, and we've, we, you know, we now we have 290, 298 to win. And uh, that was a little bit of a help for them. And uh, the way how McCollum came out and batted um, showed that they, were, they had intent. And yes, I believe, again, 23 years later, that maybe not as devastating as it, it was in yeah, 1992. Not 22 runs yeah, in one yeah. ball, at least. But at this time, I, t yeah. I still believe that um, that seven overs did rub them a little bit. We, we wish your thoughts on that, like Brian mentioned. You know, 330 or even 350 in 50 overs would be far more difficult for New Zealand to chase than 219, 43. Would you agree? Yeah, without a doubt, you know, and I totally agree with Brian, you know, and we have to also remember that South Africa had just lost three wickets, A.B. De Villiers going strong, and then they had a lot of depth in their batting, you know, Miller, you saw the way he came and he played the, that knock, so, I, and a different uh, a psychological feeling when you're chasing anything above 350, 360, uh, you know, and New Zealand would have uh, chased that in a different manner, just the psychological uh, effect would have been so much, so enormous for New Zealand, but uh, I think it's so unfortunate, you know, for South Africa. Africa, but that's the way it goes. I still don't really understand this. That was Louis' uh, uh, calculation. You know, it's so unfortunate that uh, uh, it, it helped New Zealand to come back into the game. And I think there's that shift in the momentum you saw uh, when, when rain came, you know, and also we have to remember that uh, AB, uh, uh, Brendan McCallum was very fortunate to have used the top bowlers uh, well ahead, you know, and uh, he didn't use the fifth bowler in Corey Anderson and Elliot, you yeah. know, so I think it would have been 350, 360 for sure uh, for New Zealand to chase. Okay, uh, so it all worked out really well for New Zealand. Even that fifth bowler wasn't uh, needed as much as they would have needed him if they went the full 50 overs. So anyway, to you, and we're looking at various factors that may have gone against South Africa. The other thing that you mentioned briefly, that run out by A.B. De Villiers. You know, we talk of A.B. De Villiers, we say he can do no wrong. He's like a god on the cricket field. He could even probably walk on water, but he just showed that he's human. A simple run out, he missed there of uh, Grant Elliott. The story could have been different, you reckon? Uh, yes, also there was another opportunity later on when Quinton de Kock uh, didn't uh, gather the ball. Uh, that was uh, uh, probably a lot closer than the one uh, that uh, uh, the opportunity for uh, Corey Anderson. But again, I think the throw, not so much A.B. de Villiers, the throw he had to take on the half volley. If the throw had been a little bit shorter, he would have been able to gather it well and, and, and take the uh, bales off. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the game. That's where, uh, you know, you've got to keep your cool. Uh, if he had maybe not rushed to the uh, to the towards the stumps, but stayed just a couple of uh, paces behind the stumps, maybe the ball would have been easier to gather, and he would have been able to whip the bales off. Because Corey Anderson was nowhere in the picture, Corey Anderson had given up. So you've got to you've got to say all these things that you know. Sometimes you know your your mind uh, you know plays games, and you want to go uh, go in front, try and cover everything. Didn't quite happen. So it is it is at the end of the day such a mental game. Uh, but uh, this time around, uh, the New Zealanders uh, were the ones who kept them kept their cool, while the South Africans didn't. Okay, uh, finally, we're out of time, uh, Brian, uh, to you. And one thing that everyone's writing about and most people are impressed with is Brendan McCullum's captaincy. What do you make of him as a captain? Seems to be the most aggressive right now. Very aggressive, but um, it, never, it nearly came unstuck today. I mean, yeah. I, I saw where at one point in time he moved a uh, uh, being his bowler got struck down to, through mid-off for four. He moved the mid-off to, to third and fourth slip. And two balls later, it went back through mid-off again. So, um, yes, it's very aggressive, but you've got to put some common sense to it sometimes. And um, I was a little bit worried about it. I think that sort of approach is great, especially in, in uh, New Zealand conditions against weaker oppositions. But with a strong team like South Africa, it was a bit of borderline. But... Um, it makes things very exciting. The, the commentators are talking about yeah, it. Yeah. But let's see what happens when it comes to the MCG because I think that um, you know you want to make sure and not make a fool of yourself. But um, yeah, it's been good. Aggressive captaincy. I just like to see tempered with a little bit of, of common sense. Okay. Uh, uh
mix caution with aggression but one thing you can't fault Brendan McCullum for is not just an aggressive cap- captain but an aggressive batsman as well at least he keeps standards there uh, Sunny Gavaskar Brian Lara Vivis Lakshman thanks so much for joining us